This question appeared in NEET PG 2022 and it talks about a 50 year old male who is a known case of chronic liver disease with ascites and he presented with abdominal pain and tenderness. Ascitic tap shows presence of 600 polymorphonuclears. Which of the following is the most likely etiology and your options are A. Tubercular ascites, B. Malignant ascites, C. Spontaneous bacterial peritonitis and D. Chylus ascites. Now, this is a very very important topic and uh, frequently it has been asked in lots of examination multiple times. So let's learn about spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. So remember, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis is a spontaneous infection of your ascitic fluid without any intra-abdominal source. So it's basically a spontaneous infection of your ascitic fluid without any intra-abdominal source. Let's look at how much is the incidence. So it is a pretty common and severe, you know, complication of ascitic, uh, you know, patients with ascites. Generally, the incidence rate is somewhere between 10 to 30 percent in ascitic patients. What is more interesting is it has a very high mortality rate. So almost 20% is the mortality rate of patients with spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Let's look at what can be the causative organisms. So it's very important when we talk about adult and again the causative organisms have been asked multiple times in the examination. When we talk about adults, the most common organism is E. coli followed by Klebsiella. Okay. When we talk about children. So if SBP happens in children, the most common organism is group A streptococci. Again, the organism implicated in SBP has been very frequently asked. Now, because there is not an intra-abdominal source of infection, so how does the infection, you know, happens of the ascitic fluid? So basically, the hypothesis is trans location of bacteria with the gut flora. What essentially happens is there is a translocation of bacteria from intestine to lymph node and from lymph node it causes bacteremia and this leads to the seeding of ascitic fluid. Okay. So there is basically the gut bacteria, bacteria from the gut will first go and infect the, you know, translo uh, go and infect the lymph node. From lymph node, there will be bacteremia and back because of the bacteremia, there will be seeding of ascitic fluid. So remember, there is no intra-abdominal source. Okay. Now, what is the predisposing factors? What is the predisposing factors for SPP? So the most important predisposing factor is GI bleed. So ascitic patients with GI bleed will have much higher instances of SBP. Okay. And probably that is the reason why in patients with GI bleed, we will give prophylaxis of norfloxacin because this has been shown to reduce the incidences of SBP in your uh, patients with GI bleed. What are the other predisposing factors? So another very important predisposing factor will be hypoalbuminemia, dehydration, okay, metabolic alkalosis, and lastly, you know, patients who have undergone any kind of gut preparation so ascitic patients who have undergone gut preparation for any procedure even they are going to have increased incidences of spp let's look at how will these patients present so when we talk about clinical features so our ascitic patients already ascitic patients will present with fever and 
abdominal pain and tenderness okay there can also be if the infection is more there can also be altered sensorium okay they can be altered so ascitic patient presenting with fever and tenderness abdominal tenderness sometimes the fever may not be there initially just abdominal tenderness and pain may be complaining and so a very high index of suspicion is required to diagnose sbp especially early when we do a tap ascitic tap what we will find we when we do a ascitic tap we will see that there is increased polymorphonucleosides so number one finding will be there will be increased pms that will be more than 250 when we go for the culture now here there is very very important thing which i want you to remember especially when it comes to clinical question if the cultural isolate is of only one organism if in the culture only one organism is all, is you know found it is a case of sbp if two or more organisms are isolated then it is a case of secondary bacterial peritonitis very important for you to understand so if one organism is isolated it is sbp and even you do a culture if more than one organism is isolated then it is a case of secondary bacterial peritonitis probably due to a rupture of or some internal organ or something okay so that is it sometimes you may not even have uh, you know culture uh, any organism isolated in culture so that case we called as culture negative neutrocytic peritonitis and for all practical purpose culture negative neutrocytic peritonitis is treated and managed in the same way as spontaneous bacterial peritonitis so in effect the most important thing which you have to remember is more than 250 polymorphonucleosides in your ascitic tap so that will be your diagnosis for spp okay so once we have talked about the clinical features and the diagnosis let's understand how will we manage the patient so we will use a third uh, generation cephalosporin like cefotaxime along with that hypoalbuminemia we have seen is one of the major major you know predisposing factor so we will give albumin to these patients okay already told you norfloxacin is given as a prophylaxis okay especially in patients who are highly predisposed for development of spp like patients who have gi bleed so this is about management another very important thing is we will repeat we will repeat the ascitic tap of peritoneal tap after 48 hours okay just to see you know uh, do a repeat culture of if the patient is not improving to have a second you know and sometimes this sbp may be converted into a secondary bacterial peritonitis also so for that we generally do a repeat ascitic tap after 48 hours so again this is a very very important topic sbp multiple questions have been asked in almost every examination remember so a few most important thing about this is remember that what is the causative organism super important for you to remember then how do we manage it what is the finding in the ascitic tap and what are the predisposing factors so this is the questions have been framed around these points let's look at the, the question which has actually been asked in the examination so based on just the history that he is a uh, known case of liver disease with ascites presenting with abdominal pain tenderness and when you do a tap you know polymorphonucleosides is more than 250 so the correct answer here will be spontaneous bacterial peritonitis let's look a little about all the other options also when we talk about tubercular ascites so no we know that there will be some history of tb okay and uh, uh, mention of uh, either increase in the ada levels of uh, the peritoneal tap or you know mention of uh, acid fast uh, uh, bacilli staining av staining in the uh, tap so this can be giving a hint towards your tubercular ascites about malignant ascites you will have some history of uh, malignancy being mentioned in the question and in again ascitic tap uh, or uh, in the tap peritoneal tap you will have mention of cancer cells with tumor markers like you know ca125 in case of 
carcinoma ovary so that can be given in the question for you to think about malignant ascites when we talk about chylus ascites there will be history of some you know trauma or trauma or you know some malignancy also lymphoma also which is kind of obstructive the lymph uh, you know lymphatics and uh, here when you talk about the ascitic tap then it will be mentioned of milky or turbid ascitic tap that is first thing they will mention also they will mention about increase triglycerides in the ascitic tap so again that can be a very crucial clue another important thing is in both a and d lymphocytes primarily is going to be increased in all this in spontaneous bacterial peritonitis you will have polymorphonucleus as in this case increase so this was a very very good question and uh, this question has been repeated frequently in the examination and with whatever i have taught you you will be very easily able to solve any such questions around ascites and spontaneous bacterial peritonitis